It's not disputed that in the Neolithic and the Bronze Age, many megalithic monuments, including stone circles, dolmens and chamber tombs, were intentionally aligned with the solstices or equinoxes or both. From Stonehenge in southern England to Amnidra in Malta, it seems that ancient people were quite preoccupied with the perceived movements of the sun. But how far back does this preoccupation go? In this video, I'm going to discuss a Mesolithic example of astronomical knowledge which dates back to 10,000 years ago. The European Mesolithic began around 11,000 years ago. This coincided with the start of the geological epoch known as the Holocene. At that time, temperatures increased, sea level rose, and vegetation in the landscape changed. This meant that different food sources started to be preferred by hunter-gatherers, and a change in technology also took place to exploit these resources, with microliths becoming a feature of Mesolithic groups. Some domestic shelters were built as people began to settle in one place for longer, rather than leading a purely nomadic lifestyle. In Northern Europe, this was also the time when Doggerland, the area of land joining the east coast of modern day Britain, with parts of France, Belgium, the Netherlands, Germany and Denmark, became gradually submerged. One of the most important Mesolithic sites is Starkar in North Yorkshire, England, where the oldest structure ever to be found in Britain was excavated along with deer skulls that were likely ritual headdresses. A lot of organic materials from Starkar were preserved due to it being buried in waterlogged peat, so it's become an excellent resource for understanding that time period in England. So during the Mesolithic, people broadened their food sources, adapted their stone technology, started to settle in one place, and practiced some sort of rituals. But that is not all. It appears that they also had a respectable understanding of astronomy. The evidence is scanty, but it is there, and new discoveries are being made all the time. There are many examples of Neolithic and Bronze Age astronomical knowledge. Stonehenge's northeast to southwest axis is aligned with the sunrise on the summer solstice and the sunset on the winter solstice. Both Newgrange in Ireland and Mace Howe in Scotland are aligned so that their inner chambers light up at sunrise on the winter solstice. Since the Neolithic saw the emergence of farming, it's understandable that the yearly calendar became important to people. Their reliance on the seasons likely developed into a ritual respect for the passing of the year, so it wouldn't be surprising if feasts and funerary practices were connected to these alignments at that time. However, during the Mesolithic, the domestication of plants and animals had not yet begun, so it's quite remarkable that evidence for astronomical knowledge stretches all the way back to that time. The Warren Field site near Craith's Castle in Aberdeenshire was first spotted from the air as a series of crop marks by the Royal Commission on the Ancient and Historical Monuments of Scotland in 1976, before being excavated between 2004 and 2006. The results of these excavations were published in a 2009 book titled A Tale of the Unknown Unknowns, a Mesolithic pit alignment and a Neolithic timber hall at Warren Field Craith's Aberdeenshire. The crop marks showed a pit alignment, a rectangular building and some ancient channels. Archaeologists discovered that the building had been an early Neolithic timber hall dating to between 3820 and 3690 BCE, and that the 12 pits dated back much further to the early 8th millennium and are therefore Mesolithic. The channels were interpreted as being very old geological features, which would have been dry when both the pits and the hall were created. Excavations revealed that the timber hall would have been 24 metres long and 9 metres wide with rounded ends. It had been divided into four rooms with a large pit at each end of it. There's evidence for these pits having held timber posts, but it's not clear if these were structural or if they were standalone totemic poles. 
There are 12 definite pits stretching in a curving line over 50 meters with a northeast to southwest orientation. They are ovoid in shape and vary in size and depth. The width of the widest section of each pit ranges from half a meter to two meters, and the depths range from half a meter to one meter. Various carbonized deposits such as hazel, wheat grain, alder, birch, and willow were found in the pits, which enabled archaeologists to carry out radiocarbon dating. The results suggest a date range in the first half of the 8th millennium BCE, with later reuse in the early Neolithic at the same time as the timber hall was built. Interestingly, the pits are larger in the central part of the curved line than in the other sections. Pit 6, which is in the center, appears to be offset a little to the south from the curve. As well as carbonized deposits, flint artifacts were also recovered from pit 5, and a chemical analysis found silver, copper, lead, strontium, zinc, and cadmium, which probably came from crushed rocks. The nearest place where rocks containing these elements can be found is the Pass of Balata, around 40 kilometers away. So these were probably ritual deposits that had been transported there intentionally. It's also possible that several of the pits held wooden stakes. The evidence for the recutting and reuse of the pits during the Neolithic does not mean that whatever their function was in the Mesolithic continued for thousands of years. They may have been used in an entirely different way. However, the decision to site a Neolithic timber hall near them could mean that they had originally held ritual significance and that this was still the case in some form or another several thousand years later. In the book, the archaeologists Archaeologists discuss several other Mesolithic pit alignments that may also have had ceremonial functions that continued into later periods. At Stonehenge, four and maybe five large Mesolithic post holes were found in the old car park to the northwest of the main site. They once held pine posts and three of them were in an east to west alignment. Similarly, near the Neolithic Henge and chamber tomb of Brinkelly Thu in Anglesey, five Mesolithic pits and an ox burial were discovered. It's also possible that two pit alignments near the Thornborough Henge monument in Yorkshire could date to the Mesolithic. That book was published in 2009, but since then there have been some other interesting Mesolithic discoveries. For example, 25 monumental pits dating to between 6500 and 5700 BCE were found at Linmere in Bedfordshire. Some measure as much as 5 metres in width and 1.85 metres in depth. They make up several straight lines that stretch out over as much as half a kilometre and are close to dried up streams. Some contained bones belonging to wild animals. Although it has been suggested that they may have been used for hunting or for storing food, this seems unlikely given the scale of them. It's more likely that they had some sort of ritual significance connected with the streams they were dug next to. In 2013, the Warren Field Pits were re-evaluated by a team of researchers who published their analysis in the journal Internet Archaeology. The team found evidence for several astronomical alignments at Warren Field and put forward the suggestion that tracking the months and the year had been important to the Mesolithic inhabitants of the area. Since the pits are considered as having three distinct sections, it was suggested that they may have been designed to mimic the lunar phases in one month, from waxing to full to waning. If this were the case, then it meant that the people who dug them split the month into three periods of 10 days, a type of calendar that has been used by other cultures as well. This would mean they varied the size and shape of the pits to reflect these three distinct phases. The team also suggested that the 12 pits may each have represented a lunar month, meaning they were also used to track the year. Since evidence for stakes has been found in some of the pits, it's thought a wooden pole may have been used as a marker in whichever pit represented the current month. A third alignment was also thought likely by the researchers. Since visibility to the north of the site is limited by a slope, they suggested that this third alignment might make use of the Slug Road Pass between the Cairn Mon Urn and Craigburg Hills to the south. Using software, they tracked the past paths of the sun, taking into account the variation in the obliquity of the ecliptic. They found that in 8000 BCE, the Slug Road Pass would have framed sunrise on the midwinter solstice. Now, the midwinter solstice sunrise from that site has an azimuth 
that's two degrees further north than it was then. This solar alignment would have helped to correct for errors caused by using a basic lunar calendar. Pit 6's offset location might also be explained as a marker that was used annually to recalibrate the sequence. The paper also discussed the myriad of problems associated with the Warren Field site as an astronomical observatory of sorts, such as the fact that it was probably surrounded by woodland in the Mesolithic, reducing visibility, and that when moonrise occurred during the day or during bad weather, it wouldn't have been observable. Even with the incredibly detailed study carried out by these researchers, whether the pits were created for astronomical purposes or not is still a highly debatable topic. But if Warrenfield was a lunisolar calendar, then it's possible that this knowledge was passed down to future generations and was used again in the recumbent stone circles of northeast Scotland that may have lunar alignments as well. And let's not forget, ongoing research at Stonehenge is trying to determine whether, as well as its solstitial alignment, it was also designed to observe the major lunar standstill. Various artefacts and cave paintings found in Europe and dating to the earlier Upper Paleolithic feature markings that it's been suggested may also have depicted the phases of the moon. Close to Warren Field, Mesolithic structures have been found at nether mills, which may have been domestic shelters and could therefore have been used by the people that created the pit alignments. That's it. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.